CNH industrial shares about flat today in a down market, a market in which the industrial sector was one of the worst performers. This is the first day the maker of agricultural and construction machinery is trading solely on the NYSE, completing a voluntary DD listing from the Euronext Milan. As far as 2024 goes, the company is saying it expects a tougher ag market environment than in 2023. But joining us now is CNH Industrial CEO Scott Wine. Scott, it's great to have you back on. Uh, you've been at the helm at CNH for three years. You've been on this mission to make the company simpler, more of a pure play construction and ag company that investors can really wrap their arms around. How does delisting from the Italian stock market enable that to continue? Well, Morgan, thanks for having me on and Happy New Year. Um, you know, the, the the listing from Milan, I mean, the, the Euronext Milan has been a great source for a secondary listing for us for the last uh, decade or so. But, you know, what we've been trying to do is just make our story simpler, make it easier for investors to find liquidity in the market, which they will get with a single listing. Um, also, the opportunity for us to get into some of these uh, passive ind index funds. We have already had some good success with that. We've probably got a little bit more opportunities there in 2024, but really it makes the story um, more simple. One of our cultural beliefs is make it simple, and I think this is a great example for that. I also tell you, I think our overall structure at this point, you know, we're tax domiciled in the UK, which is very favorable. We're uh, incorporated in the Netherlands, which is very similar to Delaware and gives us lots of benefits there. And we've got a really large supportive shareholder in Exor uh, in Italy. So really feel good about what this single listing on the New York Stock Exchange does to add to that overall good corporate structure we have. Okay, so what are you expecting for 2024? Because we are coming off of several years of super strong, record even, farmer income. We know that's starting to reverse uh, and that that is tied to agricultural equipment demand. So how are you preparing for that in 2024? What do you expect that to look like? Well, remember, farmer incomes are down, but they're also still at a relatively high level. And the age of equipment is also quite high. So we think while markets are going to be slower, it's nothing like some of the slowdowns we've seen in the past. So overall, you know, we're expecting, I think one of our competitors came out and said down around 10 percent. That's not inconsistent with how we see the market. But, you know, what we feel like is we've got the company in a position coming off of record earnings for both our agriculture and our construction business. Um, and, and really a, a whole host of new product offerings, and, and not to mention great technology coming with it. We feel like that we can be very competitive and win in a down market. And I think the, the second half of the year, the way that Derek Nielsen and his team did a great job protecting and gaining market share in some cases was really a, a positive momentum as we head into what could be a more difficult year. Scott, uh, South America looks particularly rough, and I'm wondering how much of that is because of the, the dryness and the flooding in Brazil specifically, and how much of it is just an overall economic and demand signal, you think, uh, what South America is going to be continuing to go through in 24? You know, South America was a record year for us in 22, and we're, you know, our largest uh, market share position, highest debt promoter scores, highest dealer satisfaction. We're, we're really, really strong in Brazil, and that market really slowed down. John, I tell you, it's been a, a bit of a head-scratcher for me because Mostly what's happening is farmers are just not selling the grains. They're harvesting um, and just waiting for uh, grain prices to rise. Now, I think we did see in the fourth quarter some of that start to uh, to flow into the market, but there's still a lot of um, harvested but not yet sold uh, grains in South America. And if they're not selling, they're not buying equipment. So which happens first, uh, a slowdown or normalization of the construction boom that's happening in North America, or you think the rebound in ag in places like South America? You know, I, South America, don't forget, South America is an incredibly strong market, and I think for decades from here on out, it's going to be good. They surpassed the U.S. in corn production um, and exports last year, uh, and we believe that that market is going to be good. And I also think Argentina— um, you know, Millet's got his work cut out for him, but I do believe that could also be uh, a very strong agriculture uh, market for us over the next several years. So we like our positions in South America. Uh, we think it's just going to be a continued weakness a little bit in 24 and then rebound in 25. I think construction don't um, we're still seeing strong demand through the end of the year. And I think that's got a little bit of legs. I, I think um, some of the some of the government spending is going to flow in and we're seeing that come through municipalities and uh, really seeing much continued strong demand in construction, much more so than I would have expected. 